Mad! I'm going to cut that out right now. Uh, let's get into the game. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another round of Disney Villainous Solitaire Style with your old buddy Strugi. Uh, we have moved on to another expansion. We've gone through all of the characters in the original Villainous release, gone through all three in the first expansion, and now we're on the second expansion, Evil Comes Prepared. Hmm, who's at me? Oh, maybe this guy. Yeah, we're playing Scar. All right, uh, fans were really clamoring for this guy, so it was a big excitement when it was announced that he was going to be in the next expansion. I will say, honestly, tiny bit disappointed in Scar's game. I don't know. I should probably shouldn't say that at the front of the video because I want you to keep watching. Um, I find his game a little bit frustrating and repetitive. But hopefully it won't play out that way this time. We'll have some fun with it. And we will have some fun with it because there are still things that we can learn um, from this game. His game is, well, all the villains' games are unique in their own ways. Um, you're special in your own way, Scar. Um, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Uh, so let's just go over the setup real quick. Uh, we're playing Disney's Villainous Solitaire. So this is a way for you to play the game. By yourself if you are I don't know stuck at home for long periods of time how could that happen uh, or if you just want to bust out a late night game by yourself or practice with one of the characters um, there's there are these rules to play solitaire so we give ourselves 20 turns I use a 20 sided die to keep track of my turns at the end of each turn I turn it down to the next <laughs> number which is right here and I go from there. So you have 20 turns to accomplish your objective. Every villain has their own objective. Okay. Then we have a six-sided die for rolling between our turns to see if we get faded or not. I have created my own fate dice. Uh, I got these little doodads in the mail with some stickers and I drew some symbols on them. And that's what I'll be using for this game, but I'll show you how the six-sided die works as well. Okay. Uh, we've got our Power Cauldron and Power Tokens. We've got our Villain Deck and our Fate Deck and our Fate Token. And we've got our Realm with all the locations on his board. And we've got our little Marker. Marker always starts right there on the left-hand location. That's Pride Rock this time. And we have our objective. Scar's objective is... What is it? Start your turn with at least 15 strength in the succession pile. Okay, so we see the, the word succession typed there just beneath his objective. That's where our succession pile is going to go. And we'll find out what that means as soon as we start playing. Okay, let's start playing. Let's grab four cards to start our turn. And you'll recall that in most of my games on my first turn, I like to go to whichever location has my... Uh, game three power symbol and my play two cards symbols or two play card symbols So that's where I'm gonna go But you'll also notice that where I just came from at pride rock Has two play card symbols. That's unique to scars game. He has two locations where he can play two cards at a time um, And that's that's very necessary for him. His whole game is pretty much about swarming his realm with allies lots and lots of hyenas and, uh, well, here's one right now. They're not that strong. It's only one strength. But for each other hyena at her location, she gets an extra strength. So hyenas can build up really quick. And you want to play them everywhere so that you can take over your, your hero's realm. Right? That's what Scar is all about. So we've got two hyenas ready to go right here. That's pretty nice. And we have this very useful card. Um, you can tell how long it's been since the latest video based on the remaining glitter on my nails. Anyway, moving on. Uh, this is an effect that lets you reveal the top four cards of your fate deck. And then you can choose one hero from those four cards. Here, uh, defeating heroes is how you get strength in your succession, succession pile. Okay, when you defeat heroes, they go in your succession pile. But first, but first, you have to defeat Mufasa. 
defeat Mufasa first, put him in the succession pile, and then uh, subsequent heroes that you defeat go into the succession pile. And you add up their strength points, and when that strength hits 15 at least, then you have accomplished your objective. Okay, so we got to take out Mufasa first. That's who we're looking for. That's why this Long Live the King card lets you look through four cards of your deck. You've got 15 cards in a fake deck, and you're trying to find Mufasa. And more than once I have played this game, and Mufasa's been on the dang bottom of the deck. So, um, that's okay. I'm not going to play him just yet. I'm going to build, or I'm not going to play this Long Live the King just yet. I'm going to, or maybe I should, because I only have three power. So that means I can play one Hungry Hyena right here. Boop. And then we'll just play Long Live the King. Let's see how that works. More than, than almost any other villain, it is important for Scar to go through his decks. He's got to move through his Fate deck and through his villain deck so he can find more cards like this that let him get through his Fate deck. He's got to go through that fate deck looking for Mufasa. So let's draw the first three cards of our fate deck. Now, what does it say? This is reveal. So everybody's going to see this. We're going to reveal it. What do we have? We have no Mufasa. We have Sarabi and Rafiki. Um, we could play them later and defeat them. Um, I don't want to play them now. I don't want to gum up my... Uh, realm with other heroes that I can't defeat. I mean, I could defeat them just to get them out of the way, but then I gotta go defeat them all over again if I want to add them to the succession pile. And who needs that kind of trouble? Nobody. So we're definitely gonna discard those guys. Uh, and then these are some, uh, these are an effect and an item. Um, this card, you actually have a way of playing this so that uh, you can move a hero around, but that's later. And look out for this sucker, because that makes your heroes really strong. What a pain. Okay, so we didn't find Mufasa, but we did dig through four cards of our fate deck. So that's good. We got nothing to be ashamed of. I know Scar has this inferiority complex, but relax, dude. Oh, hey, we got another one of these. Uh, we got this stick with me card that lets you play an action symbol in another location. So that's nice to have around. So we've drawn our hand back up to four cards. That's the end of our turn. We're going to bring our die back to 19, or down to 19, no, it's back to 19. Uh, so then we roll our six-sided fate die. If you have a six-sided die at home, like this very pretty marbleish, ivory-ish thing with gold pips that I found online that I'm really proud of because it looks like it actually belongs in the game. Anyway. If you have this, roll it. If you roll a one, that's not in focus. There we go. If you roll a one or a two, play fate on yourself. Draw two cards from your deck. Choose one to play, discard the other. All right. If you roll a three or a four, nothing happens. If you roll a five or a six, get that in focus. If you roll a five or a six, you can play a condition card from your hand if you have one, okay? So that's how you roll for fate at home with your six-sided die. I made this little special die with little symbols on it. So if I roll the fate symbol, I play fate on myself. If I roll this pink play a card symbol, I can play a condition card. I might, uh, oops, I might lose one power or I'll roll a zero and nothing will happen. Okay, so let's roll for fate. All right, I got the condition symbol, but I don't have a condition card, so nothing happens. Let's move on to our next turn. Um, you will know from my other videos that I tend to hop back and forth between my two highest power locations. That's especially true in Scar's game because both of them have two play a card symbols. Very useful. Da, 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 da. Um, but we don't have quite enough power to play all them. Hey, wait, watch this. We're going to move this Hungry Hyena over here using our move an item or ally symbol. And actually for Scar's game, this is only a move ally symbol. Because Scar has no items. He's the only villain that doesn't have any items. He's all allies. He's all about getting those 
uh, hungry, hungry hyenas out there to chomp on his enemies. So I'm going to play Stick With Me. It costs zero, but it lets me perform uh, any action, one action other than fate at a location where there are hyenas. So since there are hyenas here, I'm going to use it to grab more power. There, that was super handy. You know what? Let's play it twice. Why don't we just play it twice? <laughs> and we'll play that action symbol twice and get a bunch of power. And then um, in our future turns, then we, can then we can really use those two play a card symbols. Okay, cool. So we play two cards, we gain two power, and we moved an ally. And so that's the end of our turn. We're going to draw our hand back up to four. Oh my goodness, we are really lucky now. This, I, honestly, this doesn't always happen. Um, I try to play allies everywhere, but sometimes you just don't get them. But this time we have. We can really carpet the whole realm with allies now. That's good stuff. Let's move our, or turn our turn counter down to 18. Uh, this is when you would roll your six-sided fate die. I'm going to roll nine special die here. And we rolled the fate symbol, so we have to play fate against ourselves. Let's see what we've got. Now, obviously, if you are playing against Scar and you reveal Mufasa during a fate action, you're not going to play Mufasa. Because even though he's a very strong hero, that's literally playing right into Scar's hands because that's the hero he needs to defeat to get his game going. And look, we found Mufasa. So we're going to get rid of Mufasa. Definitely get rid of him. And it is very useful to play heroes on Scar before Mufasa has shown up um, so you can slow him down. Because now... He either has to live with having this hero in his realm until he defeats Mufasa so that he can defeat her, or he defeats her now to get her out of the way, and then he's got to defeat her again at some point. So let's really make his life difficult. Uh, her ability doesn't do anything because there aren't any heroes to move, but it's good enough for now. Okay? Cool. Well played imaginary player okay so back to scar we're gonna go to the elephant graveyard and gain three more power and now you're probably thinking uh-oh what do we do now mufasa's in the discard we can't like, go through our deck to find him don't worry there are cards in our deck that let us dip into our fate discard as well so we'll get to that for now Let's play a couple of hyenas to Nala's location because we have two play a card symbols and that costs us four power. Um, in case you haven't guessed, yeah, I am just going to get rid of her just for now. We'll come back to it. Okay. So that's the end of our turn there. I have a discard symbol, but I don't want to get rid of either of these cards. I like them. So... Got another Long Live the King. <laughs> wow. We're like getting only two cards. <laughs> We're getting Long Live the King or Hungry Hyena. Uh, oh dear, guys. Oh dear. That's rough. We don't really need all of these cards right now. We need some other cards. Um, we just keep pulling the, the same card over and over. So it's going to be a little rough, but we'll figure it out. All right. Let's move us down to turn number 17. And we're going to roll for fate. We get faded again. Let's see what we have here. We have Timon and a Prophecy. Uh, Timon is only two strength. He gets stronger if Pumbaa's in the realm, but that's not going to cause as much trouble as attaching the Prophecy to Nala. So now her strength has doubled. She has six strength. That is problematic. And maybe I won't defeat her. <laughs> Maybe that's too much trouble now. Okay. Um, but you'll notice, let's look at this. So we have two hungry hyenas here. They both start out with one strength. But because there's one other hyena in the location, they both get an extra strength. They're at four strength right now. And all I'd have to do is play another hyena and they'd have enough strength to get rid of Nala. But that's using a lot of hyenas on one 
hero that's not even going to go into my succession pile. So I'm going to wait on it, you guys. Um, let's go to the Savannah. We'll gain one power. We will play Hungry Hyena. Whoops, I don't <laughs> get two power for doing that. I spend two power. Okay. All right. Uh, and then we will perform a fate action. So when we perform a fate action, we take this other die that I made. This I call my fate defense die. It has gold symbols on it. Uh, the other one is my fate attack die that has symbols written in black. So that's how I tell them apart. If you are rolling to perform a fate action on your turn, since you don't have an actual other player to play fate against, you know, to draw from their fate deck and all, um, you're just going to roll a die to see what kind of interesting thing happens to you. If you roll a 1 or a 2, you get to gain 1 power. If you roll a 3 or a 4, nothing happens. If you roll a 5 or a 6, you can take the Fate token and put it on top of your Fate deck, and then you are protected the next time you roll Fate. Okay. Similarly, with my specialty die, I can gain 1 power. I might lose 1 power. That's not really something that would happen if you play to fate action in the game. Although sometimes when you play fate against someone, you draw two cards that you can't actually play against them. And so that's kind of a bummer. So, but that just, this just adds some risk and danger to playing fate. And um, maybe nothing will happen. We don't know. And maybe we'll roll the fate symbol and we get to move the fate token on top of our deck. Okay. So let's perform fate. See what we get. Hey, that's nice. We've already had fate played on us a couple of times and it's been rough. So best to lock that down. So now we're protected from the next time we get fate targeted on us. All right, so that's the end of our turn. No, nope, no, no, it's not. Uh, I did this, this, and this. So now I'm going to use the discard. And since we've already found Mufasa, you can still use these cards to find other heroes to play to build up your succession pile. Um, but we've already found Mufasa and we're trying to get him out here, and so these aren't as useful as they usually would be. Um, I need to find the card that lets me take heroes out of my discard. So I'm getting rid of those cards. I'm going to draw my hand back up to four. got a condition card. Got an effect. Oh, we've got the Stampede. Oh, that's a tricky card to play. Um, we'll get into that. Okay. So now it's the end of our turn. Now we move our turn counter down to 16. Can you still hear the birds out my window? Not to date this, but it's Easter Sunday as I record this, so I think that's kind of appropriate. Okay, so we rolled fate. So instead of playing a fate action on ourselves, we're just gonna move the fate token off of the fate deck. And now we're okay. And that kind of, uh, simulates when you're playing a multiplayer game and if you get faded you get to take the fate token and no one can play fate on you until it is moved to someone else yeah so we got protected for one turn oops causing a little rumbling in the ground here okay next da, 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 da. i need to go somewhere with a discard symbol so that would take me to the elephant graveyard i'm doing i'm really glad i played those two stick with me cards early on because i sometimes have trouble gaining power with scar and that really gave me a nice boost so i don't have to worry about that now okay um condition this lets you manipulate your fate deck when someone plays fate on you uh, especially if you're worried about them uh, grabbing one of those prophecies or grabbing the Hakuna, Maka Hakuna Matata card and pulling a hero out of your succession pile. Um, but it's not really something I need right now. So I'm going to get rid of that. Feeding Frenzy lets you move a whole bunch of hyenas to one location. That's really handy if you've got them all spread out and there's one hero that you need to, to get rid of. Um, but we don't need it right now. We're going to keep our long live the king card. We're going to keep this ally. This is the only ally that's not a hyena. This is Stampede. It's... Uh, it's tricky. Because you play it to a hero's location, move the hero one location, and then perform a vanquish action with them there. 
So what you have to do is have some allies waiting at that location so that when you move the hero over, you still have allies that you're able to use against them. But a lot of times I'm building up my allies at the hero's actual location. And so if I move them, then they'd be somewhere without an ally. And it's it's tricky. If you if you really want to use this, this can be useful to get an extra vanquish action in during your turn. Um, it's useful for moving a hero over if you don't have time to move all of your allies over to get them. But it takes some strategy. I'm going to keep it, though, because it is an ally with three strength, and that can always come in handy maybe later. So let's draw our hand back up to four, and we found the card we're looking for. We found two good cards, is actually, is what we did. Okay, I'm glad of that. That was a good draw. So we'll get to that on our next turn. All right, friends, let's move this. Let me turn our little turner down to 15. So one rule I have with fate is if you've gone five turns without rolling fate, you automatically get fated. Uh, we've rolled fate like two or three times already, so we don't have to worry about that. We're actually just going to roll to see if we get fated or not. But that's just to prevent you from going your whole solitaire game without ever having fate played on you. Because that's just unrealistic. Talking lions is one thing, but not ever getting faded? No, can't accept that. Woo, so speaking of which, we got faded. Ooh, dear, let's see. Okay, okay. Um, Pumbaa, medium strength, gets stronger if Timon is in the realm, but Timon's not in the realm, so we're not playing that. Zazu, Zazu is interesting. Um, if you play him at a location with a hero, that hero gets plus one strength. If he's anywhere else in the realm, that hero gets minus two strength. So you're like, why? That's such a weird ability for a hero to have. Well, recall that we do have a card that lets us play heroes from our discard. So it might be worth Scar's while to play Zazu somewhere in the realm to... Oh, I'm sorry, I had that backwards. If he's at their location, they get minus two strength. So I, as the player playing against Scar, am certainly not going to play him to Nala's location. I'm going to play him over here, and now she gets plus one strength. So now she's up to seven, which is crazy pants. Um, yeah, but Scar can play Zazu and weaken a hero by playing Zazu to their location. So... That's why that is the way that is. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> we're going to gain one strength. And we're going to take this card, Whisper. Choose a card from your Fate discard pile and play it. Yes, sir. For one strength, or for one power, rather. We're going to go nab... Mufasa, and what I'm going to do is, doop, I'm going to play him to the Elephant Graveyard, because that's where Zazu is, and that means he is down to four strength. That makes him much easier for me to defeat. And I don't have a move ally action here, which is a bummer. That would have helped me a lot. But what are you going to do? So we're going to draw our hand back up to four. Actually, I should I should wait to do that till the end of my turn because I also want to roll for fate. I'm going to perform a fate action here with my fate defense die. Ooh, I lose one power. All right. Okay. I didn't di I didn't discard any cards. I already drew my hand back up to four, so that's the end of that turn. Go to 14, and let's see if we get faded. Our realm is getting really full. See, this is what happens when you can't find your Fossa at first. Your realm can get stuffed full of heroes, and you have to make some critical calls. Like, am I going to start defeating these heroes to get them out of here, or am I going to sit around and wait for Mufasa? All right, well, we lost one power. Ugh. Bad rolls. Okay, here we go. We're going to go to the Gorge. 
I like that the Vanquish symbol in on Scar's board, Scar's board, Scar's Scar's cards, Scar's board, is uh, at the gorge. You know, because that's where he, you know, committed the act that vanquished the hero. We're gonna use our move ally symbol, and we're gonna move a hungry hyena over here. So their plus one power or plus one strength kicks in. So both of these ladies have two strength, which gives them four total. And Mufasa has been reduced to four strength because of Zazu. Thanks, Zazu. So we're just gonna use our vanquish symbol and defeat Mufasa. So when Mufasa is defeated, put him into the succession pile. If Mufasa is in the succession pile, all heroes you defeat are put into the succession pile. All right. So I'm just gonna scooch him under here so I can see that. So I have six points in my succession, <laughs> succession pile. I got 11 more to go. Ooh, ooh, boy. Um, I have a play a card symbol still, so I'm gonna play my other hungry hyena right here for two power, and then we can get rid of Nala later. We have this very nice effect card that lets us search through our deck. We'll do that later, and then we will use our fate symbol. I'm kind of hoping to roll fate so that I can be protected for a bit. Well, that's okay, I guess. Plus one power. Okay. Draw our hand back up to four. Oh, we finally got one of our leader hyenas. I was wondering when those guys were kind of going to come out. So, of course, we've got Shen Shenzi, Banzai, and Ed in our deck. And they are only a little bit stronger than your basic hyena, but they have really helpful abilities that basically make it cheaper uh, for you to play hyenas or to get get your money back on hyenas, sort of. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're they're the leaders of the pack, and they help like draw more hyenas out into your realm. That's very handy. I'm glad we found one of them at least. All right. So what's this little? There's this little speck of dust that keeps landing on Elephant Graveyard. I don't know what's going on. Um, okay, so we're going to turn our counter die down to 13 and roll for a, a action. Zero. Nothing happens. Cool, cool, cool. You guys aren't going to notice this, but I am going to pause the camera for just a sec. Next turn, what have we got? Where were we? Okay, 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 cool. We got some good stuff. So, uh, we can't defeat Nala just yet because we just used our Vanquish symbol and we gotta move somewhere else. So let's just go over to the Savannah and nab one power. And we're gonna play Sorry, guys, I'm shifting around here trying to get more comfortable. We're going to play Be Prepared. This is a really good card. And of course, it's it's his signature song, too. So it should be a good card. Uh, when you play Be Prepared for one power, you're going to discard the top three cards of your deck. So they go straight into your discard. And then you get to take your discard pile and choose either one effect or up to two allies and put them into your hand. All right, so I got Ed the Hyena, got my other leading uh, Hyena here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab allies, cause I need them. So I'm gonna grab two allies and put them into my hand. There, good, there. Nicely stocked up on allies there. Yeah. Okay, I like the look of that. We got all kinds of allies. We got packs of hyenas, we got leader hyenas, we got wildebeest stampedes. That was a good play, well done. So let's perform a fate action here. And we get to move our fate token on top of the deck. That's good. 
everything's going swimmingly. We'll end our turn with that. We're not going to discard any cards because we like our hand right now. And we are going to turn our counter down to 12 and roll the fate attack die. Nothing happens. Cool. All right. Let's move over here. Let me think. You know what? Okay. Haha. -ha. I just figured something out because I can do math. So Zazu weakens Nala by two strength. So she's got six total because of the prophecy attack attached to her. Um, but minus two brings her down to four. So I don't actually need all these hyenas here. So I'm going to use my move an ally symbol and just move this one over here and use them for other things. I, didn't, I don't have to move them out of the way. I can just use two hyenas to get rid of Nala. But um, why not space things out a little bit more? Because we've got a lot of ground to cover here. All right. Um, let's... Here's a useful thing. We're going to play Shenzi, because when I play Shenzi, you may play another hyena from your hand for free. So we're going to get Ed out on the board as well. So let's play Shenzi for two power. And then, whoops, smooth. And then for free, we'll just, oops, that's not, I did that backwards. Shenzi for two power. And then for free, we will play Ed over here. There we go. Cool. We got lots of hyenas all over the place. Okay, so let's perform our vanquish action. We're going to get rid of Nala. I'm going to put the Prophecy in our Fate discard, and we're going to put Nala over here in the Succession pile. Now that we have Mufasa in there, we can start piling up other heroes. So now we're up to 9 Strength. We're aiming for 15, so we got to get 6 more Strength in there. Zazu is only 2. Hardly worth the trouble. It's better to just keep him around so that... <gasps> Zazu has to be at her location to make her weaker. Okay, so you probably were all screaming at me. So i um, going to pretend that we never moved this guy. And we're just going to... There. We're just going to get rid of all of them. Wait a minute. So she'd actually be seven strength. Oh, Lord. Okay, so here's what else we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to have to get rid of Ed. Uh, we're going to pretend that we played him over here. See, I'm trying to make this all work so I don't have to go back and replay everything. So because she was actually 7 power, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So she would have been 4 strength. Yeah, okay, so that would be all that we would have needed to defeat her. Because every time a hyena is at this location, they get one strength stronger. So these guys would have both been four strength, and that's enough to get rid of Nala. Ed is now over there. <laughs> now I'm going to use the move an ally symbol and move him over here. Okay. Sorry, guys. Did you follow all that? It really does make sense, I swear. Okay, I just had to use more hyenas than I had meant to but it's okay we got it figured out we didn't break any rules in the end not that Scar isn't above that but you know there's a time and a place Let's roll for fate action which gives us one power okay cool okay so we got all that sorted good for us Let's see what else we got. Oh, Whisper. Very good card. Just what we need. I like it. Okay. Let's see. Da -da, da -da, da -da -da. That's the end of our turn. We turn our counter down to 11. And we roll for a fate action. 
We lose one power. Okay. Well, you know, it could have been a lot worse, honestly. Let's move over here to Pride Rock. I'd really lo love to somehow move Zazu over here so I can use my second play a card symbol there. We'll have to figure that out. I mean, I actually could. I could play Stampede here, and that would move Zazu over here and let me defeat him with Ed. But I don't want to use a Stampede just to take out Zazu. That's a lot of trouble. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a Hyena to Ed's location because that reduces their cost by one, so it's only one power. And then we're going to play Whisper. We get to choose another card from our Fate Discard pile and play it. Some little puppy is upset out there. I don't have any super strong heroes. Um, but Rafiki will do. I would like to get him out of there anyways. No, no I'm not. Because Rafiki has a thing where you have to defeat him before defeating other heroes. And if he's here in the succession pile, um, then a fate action could pull him out and get him in my way. So we're just going to go with Pumba, who is worth three strength. And we're going to mind our P's and Q's and play him over here uh, at Zazu's location so that he gets minus two strength. So he's actually one strength. Pretty nice. A single hyena card could do this all on their lonesome. Um, and that actually we'll use the move and ally symbol and we'll just move the hungry hyena over here so we don't have to discard Shenzi. Okay. So let's draw our hand back up to four. Ooh, cool. we got our be prepared card again. All right. So the hero I'm really looking for is Simba because he is worth five strength. So obviously that's gonna help me get to my goal a lot quicker. He also, he and Mufasa can't be pulled out of the succession pile if an opponent plays Hakuna Matata on you. So if you have Mufasa and Simba in your succession pile, that's 11 points right there that are locked in. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Okay, so down to 10. Gonna roll for fate, and we do, but the fate token is already on there, so we just move it off. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the gorge, and I'm going to, you know what I'm gonna do is actually, I am gonna use Shenzi to defeat Pumbaa, because this puts her in my discard, and I can play Be Prepared to bring her back, and her ability uh, happens when you play her. So she's useful to play again and again because she lets you repeatedly play extra hyenas. All right, let's slip Pumba in here. Watch out, buddy. All right, we're up to 12. We need three more points. Yeah. And we're going to play Long Live the King. For one power, I'm going to try to find Simba. I'm going to reveal the top four cards of my deck. There's only five cards left, so chances are I will find Simba. There he is. So he's who I'm going to play. And of course, as usual, I'm going to play him to Zazu's location. So that brings him down to three strength. And that's good because while Simba is in your realm, hyenas can only be as strong as two strength. So even if you have a ton of hyenas piled up at one location, they can only go up to two. So all I need to do is move one hyena over. So this hyena is now two, Ed is two, I've got four strength. Simba's been weakened, so that's enough to defeat him on a later turn. You know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to move Ed. I'm going to move this hyena. 
because I've had, I got a plan. That doesn't work either. <laughs> no, it does. Okay, this is gonna work, you guys. Hang on. <laughs> We're gonna do this. Uh, let's perform a fate action. All right, so that, hmm, okay. We're getting quite protected. Um, we haven't gotten to the part of Scar's game that I found that I find frustrating where your opponents are constantly pulling heroes out of your succession pile and replaying them or attaching items to them that make them super strong or make you have to defeat them twice. That's the worst. Um, that hasn't happened yet because we've been really lucky with this um, fake defense die. So maybe you'll see an easy win from Scar. I don't know. We'll see. Let's draw our hand back up to four. We got another ally. Let's draw, take this down to nine. Whoa. Okay. We are rolling fate a lot, but we keep getting the fate protection as well. Okay, we're gonna go here. We're gonna gain two power, because there are two cards that I wanna play. Well, I really only have to play one. I'm going to move an ally and I'm move hyena over here, the hungry hyena. So the strongest they can get right now is two power or two strength, but that's all we need. So that's two, four, six, and Simba is five. He's three right now because he's at Zazu's location, but not for long. We're going to play Stampede. Here, let's stack these that way. Get them out of our way. We're gonna play Stampede for two power. If Stampede if if Stampede is played to a location that has a hero. Move one hero at that location to an adjacent location. Then you may perform a vanquish action at the hero's new location. Da, 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 da. Okay, so it took all of these hyenas to do it, but we vanquished Simba. So let's slide him in here. And now we have 11 points locked in, plus six more from the other two heroes. So that gives us 17 points. So we've met our goal, but we have to start our turn. So we have to survive a round of fate. And what I'm going to do uh, well, first, I'm going to use my other play a card symbol. I'm going to play Be Prepared. Wow, so you've almost gotten to the end of this deck as well. Um, this pretty much just lets me take my pick of what I want. Um, I'm going to play... I'm going to take Whisper is what I'm going to do. Because that will let me... Is that what I want? It is. It is. It is. And that way I can pick another hero out of the discard if I want. It's a little faster than doing Long Live the King. You can just nab the exact hero that you want. All right, so let's draw our hand back up to four. Ooh, I got Bonsai. I really like Bonsai's ability. Um, when you, anytime hyenas are discarded from his location, you get one power for each of them. So it's like getting your money back. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now Actually, even though I just grabbed Whisper, which is to play cards for my discard, um, I am going to skip rolling the die, and I am going to play a Fate action. Because that is usually what happens to you when you are at this point in Scar's game, and really any villain's game. I'm even wondering if that's something I should just institute anytime my villain has gotten to a point where they will win at the start of the next turn. I should just play a fate action and see what happens. So we're gonna play a fate action. We're gonna take two cards. Whoosh. All right. Okay, so Prophecy, uh, we've already done that one. That would make Zazu stronger, but Scar has shown no interest in defeating Zazu, so that really wouldn't help us. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to play Hakuna Matata, okay? We get to choose a strength a hero with a strength of three or less from the succession pile and play that hero. So we'll just grab, we'll grab Nala. 
We'll bring her back, why not? Um, if Scar plays Whisper to grab a card from his discard pile, he can play this card because it lets him move a hero to any location. And like I say, sometimes you, you want to do that. You want to get Zazu out of the way. Um, Nala has that same ability. I can't get her card picked up. <laughs> okay. Uh, but she doesn't want to move Zazu right now because he's covering the other play, a card symbol at the Elephant Graveyard, and she doesn't want him anywhere near her because he'll weaken her. So we're just going to play her where we played her before. So now she's four strength because of Zazu's ability. And... Scar's succession pile is down to 14 points, so he's one point shy. He's got to re. He's got to re defeat somebody if he wants to win this thing. Okay. Cool. But here's what he's gonna do. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So, we start our next turn. And we're going to play one card, Whisper. And that lets us play a card from our Fate discard pile. Uh, there aren't any heroes. Normally we'd use this to get a hero out of our discard and put them up here so that we can defeat them and add them to our succession pile. But this time we're going to play the, Huku the <laughs> Hakuna Matata. I'm having a lot of pronunciation issues on this episode, guys. Sorry. And this lets us move a hero to any location. So we're going to move Nala to Zazu's location, which brings her down to one strength. We don't even really need to do this because the Stampede is three strength, so they would be able to defeat her anyway, but you know, it's a nice bonus. It's a little bit of overkill, and he's kind of all about that. Okay, um, yeah, so we've done that, and then we're just gonna use that Vanquish symbol and Vanquish Nala again. using the Stampede. And so now we're back up to 17 points. I am having such issues getting cards into places without messing up their edges. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna worry about rolling for fate action. I'm just gonna draw my hand back up to four. I got another Stampede. Okay, so now we're down to seven. So that little that little thing that happened there with the Kuna Matata being played, that has happened to me like six times in a row before as I'm trying to win with Scar. And it can be kind of discouraging. You just you're you're so close, you're so close, and then you're not. <laughs> and it goes back and forth like that for what feels like ages. And that's that's kind of what annoys me about Scar's game. All right, so we rolled the condition symbol, so we are going to play Pride. If this were an actual game against live opponents, you would look to see if someone had discarded two or more cards during their turn, and then you would play Pride, and you gain three power. Isn't that handy? It's not really that handy, because now our next turn is starting, and we have 17 points in our succession pile, which is more than 15, so that means we win. Yay! Um, not that dramatic, not as dramatic or traumatic as Scar's game usually is. Like I say, it goes back and forth. You've got um, those prophecies that make heroes really strong. You have this nasty card here, Rafiki's Stick, and you attach it to a hero, and when Scar defeats that hero, you just discard the stick and then you gotta defeat the hero all over again. I had to do that with Mufasa once. It's a drag. Um, but remember Hakuna Matata only replays heroes of strength three or less. So Simba and Mufasa were safe in here, so that gave me 11 points locked in, and I just had to defeat a few weaker heroes to get those last few points. And that's where the trouble comes in. You can go back and forth with your opponents grabbing your heroes out of your succession pile and replaying them on you. And whoo, does it get tiring. But hey, it didn't happen this time. We did pretty well. 
uh, we really got the drop on them. We rolled some really good uh, fate defenses, so that protected us for a bit. I imagine that was the main reason we didn't suffer that fate too often. So that's Scar's game, guys. Um, our first big hero in the next expansion. Um, the next two heroes are super, or heroes. <laughs> They're, they're heroes in their own minds. Our next two villains are uh, really fun. In fact, the next one is another one of my favorites in the entire game and one of my favorite villains of all time. So, we're looking forward to that. Uh, once again, if you had a good time and enjoyed watching this, enjoyed hanging out with me, I thank you. Please go to ko-fi.com slash and leave a tip. Share this video around, tell your friends about it. Uh, there's a big fandom for this game, and uh, I've already gotten comments and been connected with some people out in the larger fandom, and that's really fun. So let's just all enjoy ourselves playing Villainous until we can get out in the open and hang out together again, okay? Thanks, guys. Long live the king.